and I remember her saying, okay, you're going to play Mr. Sin today. <laughs> and she hands me this purple puppet with a nasty mustache. <laughs> Pop little puppet up, and literally on cue, 80 kids out there all, boo, no, yuck, I hate that guy. I was like, man, these guys are trained on cue. Like, I don't know if they got candy for doing that or what. But. Oh, man, they just want to come down on deep someone. Theological I guess. <laughs> deep theological uh, teaching. Deep theological teaching. Hey everyone, welcome to Together We Build. My name is Chris Banky. I'll be hosting this show today and I've got with me Prudence O'Hare. How are you doing, Prudence? Um, It's kind of warm in here. Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to not say, how are you doing? No, I'm sick and tired of that question. Okay, well, we'll skip that then. And we also have Bobby Hobby. He's a (laughs) senior leader at uh, Eagle Mountain Apostolic Resource Center in Bend, Oregon. Also on Eagle Mountain TV, he has a show called The New Era. So if you're watching this, you're on Eagle Mountain TV, and you also need to see his show called The New Era, which is also on Eagle Mountain TV, which is fantastic. But Bobby, I'm going to ask it anyway. Even though I'm not supposed to, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Yes, good. And I'm glad to be here with you guys. Maybe it's not the question that's the problem. Maybe it's the answers are too boring. Yeah. Maybe you need to come up with a better answer than fine. Fine, I will. What is it? I don't have to think about it. Okay. Next time. All right, next time. Next time. Um, But I'm excited about today. I'm super glad to have Bobby on the show with us. We're going to dig into something I think is really cool and can be confusing to a lot of people. Maybe it's old hat for you. Maybe you're well studied in this, but I still think even if you understand these particular things, this is definitely going to be valuable for you to watch. But for a lot of people, it's very mysterious almost, and that is mantles and anointings. So I'm super excited to just jump into that. But before we just jump into things we would normally do the be or not be but we're going to shake it up we're going to do trivia questions Mm. bobby doesn't even know about this but we have these contests as we start these shows and this one's trivia and what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask you guys a couple of computers turned so we can't see the answer no cheating i'm lowering my brightness i'm going to ask you guys some questions and they're trivia questions, and we're going to see if you know the answers to these. Do we have buzzers? Oh, Can yeah. We... Where's our buzzers, Where's Chris? our buzzers? That's your department, the buzzer department. We actually do. We have we have one that with Trump saying, that's fake news. Nice. Um, okay. I want that one. So <laughs> we're going to jump into this, and here's, the, here's how it works. I'm going to phrase a question. And it's a trivia question. They're they're odd and funny trivia questions. You guys are going to try to guess it. And if you guess correctly, you win $100 million. Is it multiple choice? Nice. $100 million. Is it multiple choice? No. Do you want me to make it multiple choice? I could do that. It's just easier. Okay, let's just try the first one. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. Okay, so first one. In Florida, only on Sundays, it is illegal for a single woman to do what? In Florida, only on Sundays, it is illegal for a single woman to do this one activity. Um, what is it? Prudence? Go to the karaoke bars. Go to the karaoke bars. Great guess, Bobby. Ooh. <clears throat> Remember, $100 million if you get this right. <laughs> Mow her lawn. Super good guess. No. Does anyone else have any guesses? Okay, they don't. They don't have any guesses. You got to be quick. You got to be quick. Production teams got to be quick. The answer is skydive. Oh, what is that, this real? This is re- this is real. Very cool. Who That's why it's funny. This in, in Florida, Florida. Wow. only on Sundays, it is illegal for a single woman to skydive. Hmm. Which makes I wonder how that came about. Perfect sense. How, did, how does that <laughs> law? All these all these laws. They started from some like oh, yeah. like it made sense at the time oh, yeah. when somebody did it, right? Yeah, some, something something happened. We can't have these single women jumping yeah. out of planes yeah. on Sundays. Are you if, kidding me? If you're married, that's amazing. Yes, make a law, <laughs> make a law. <clears throat> okay, this one isn't yeah. quite as funny, but it's funny enough. Um, Johnny Depp is famously afraid of what? Johnny Depp, Mister Pirate himself. Water. That would be. <laughs> I'm not going to say if it's right or wrong. Bobby? I'm going to say spiders. Spiders, also good guess. Water, spiders, no, clowns. That's not uh, even that far. Because, wow. like, everybody, it's like in fashion to be afraid of clowns now. Right. I'm not afraid of clowns. You're not? No. You like, so, you see a clown by himself, not in a parade, in a uh, abandoned building, 
looking out the hey, window wait. at you, <laughs> would you be afraid of okay. them? Okay. Um, I would probably be suspicious of anyone <laughs> in an abandoned and building. If you're a single woman in Florida, <laughs> it better not be on a Sunday if you're exactly. thinking of jumping out of a plane. Okay, here's another one. In California, you can't legally buy a mousetrap without having what? A you permit. Can't, you can't <laughs> legally buy a mousetrap. You have to have a permit. A mousetrap without having what? I say a permit. Permit? Yeah. This is a pretty obvious one. ID. Hunting license. You both are kind oh. of right. You're both kind of right. Can you imagine? I need to get a hunting license. Oh, what are we? We have to deer, you know, elk. The first thought no. that came to mind on that question was cheese. It, so if you, if, you, if you kill a mouse without a mouse trap, is that like illegal poaching then? Or? Right, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, just three, three more because mm-hmm. these are I got like eighty of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it is illegal to do what in the French vineyards? It is illegal to do what activity? Spit in the French vineyards. <laughs> Great guess. Great guess. Bobby's got. The, he has the answer. I can tell by the look on his face. He actually he's has actually the answer. He's actually heard of it before, probably, and he's just. It is illegal his to brain. do what in the French vineyards? I would say it is illegal to um, use the bathroom on the grounds. Very close, but it's actually land a flying saucer. It is illegal to <laughs> land a flying saucer. <laughs> Are you serious? Very close. This is like <laughs> what? This is a real law on the books. No, no landing flying saucers. Okay, there's two okay. more. Two more. Um, okay, this is uh, what is this the fear of? Coprastatophobia. Coprastatophobia is the fear of what? Coprostatophobia. I have to say it like that to make sure I get all of the syllables of this incredible word in. Coprostatophobia is the fear of what? Strangulation of cobras. Very good guess. Very good guess. Or being strangled by a cobra. Actually, they bite, but um, we'll just go with that. I would say it's the fear of uh, things being above you. Also a very good guess. It is actually not, though. It is the fear of constipation. <laughs> oh. Which well, you guys were both pretty okay. close on that Okay. One. I wouldn't have guessed that. Okay. On the same vein, last one. Same vein, last one. We're, we're doing amazingly You guys well, are by the actually way. 100% so far. Yeah. 100% Who right. Who claimed... The or not the bees. This is, this, is this is what they claimed. This is what they claimed. Um... Who claimed, Mm -hmm. what famous person from history claimed they could literally drive the devil away with their fart? (laughs) Whoa. Famous person that claimed they could drive the devil away with their fart. Great guess. All right, first of all, let me just give some accolades to whoever this person is. (laughs) That's a title I wouldn't actually claim if it was true. I mean, you have to be pretty confident. In your abilities to, to step out <laughs> on a limb. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes. So I'm going to say it was Aristotle. It was Martin Luther. Oh, <laughs> well, see? See? He was the I right guy. I would have yeah, never like, expected Listen, that. I can, cl- I can drive the devil. So we just need to give that guy more chili, and he can just solve uh, oh. society's ills. Absolutely. I mean, he, if he came to one of our chili feeds here at Eagle Mountain... <laughs> We could really help out our region. It, it would help the whole region. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're clearing out the region. The question is, is the medicine worth the, like, what is that phrase? Is the, is the cure worth the I don't know, Chris. Prevention worth the, <laughs> Do you want the demons dro- drove out if the way is with this method? Right. That's the question. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So anyways, on that note, we should probably get into the actual topic now that we've dug into these incredible... And the question really is, the the segue, the tie-in, is would Martin Martin Luther's skill be an anointing or a mantle? Ooh. Probably neither. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm going to go with neither. You're going to go with neither. Okay, that wasn't official trivia, but um, yeah, we, let's transition. On that, let's transition into this topic. And I think this is a super good topic because um, in some streams of Christianity, there's certain types of words that get used a lot. And I think sometimes they get used by people that don't even know what they are. They're not even sure what the word means. She's f waving in the coffee. Wow, she's who's waving, this guy? She's waving in the coffee. <laughs> Is this beautiful man? Okay, this one's Bobby's. Why, thank you. Thank you, thank This you. one is probably... Mm, this don't these don't that's I like Becky. being on this show. <laughs> this is me. This is awesome. This is Yeah. Okay. This is yep. All right. You need to invite me back next week. Yes, you can come back <laughs> next week. So, um All right. No, we so we're talking okay, about mantles and anointings. Okay. And I just want us to pretend like I and Chris don't really know anything about them. Like we we've been yes. in the church for a long time. We've read the word in the scripture mm -hmm. many times, but really we have no clue what, what it even, how it even pertains right. to us as Christians and right. what it even is. Yep. So you're just going to dissect this yes. a bit. So let's start, let's start off at just at the top, Bobby. If you could walk us through just a definition. We talk about mantles and mantles falling and mantle places over the fireplace. Like, yes. just define for us <laughs> no, a mantle, anointing, this kind of thing. Help <laughs> us. Let's let's lay a foundation with that first. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys have an amazing show, and it's always uh, incredible to watch. I get to watch these um, from time to time, and you guys go after hot topics, and they're always relevant. And the way you guys do it is super down to earth, but yet. It's thought-provoking, so thanks. Thank you. I love that. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so, the Bible is the standard, obviously, for mantles and anointings. And so, I'm going to just try to break it down super simple, and then the goal is to go back to Scripture and find out what Scripture says about mantles and anointings. But if you've been around the church for a long time, I mean, there's a good chance that you haven't heard of mantles and anointings. Or if you're brand new to what we would call church, um, you are like, Mantles and anointings, that's like total Christianese. Like, what are you even talking right, about? exactly. Okay, so an anointing is what the Bible would call is a special empowerment from the Lord for something specific. You can have an anointing for a, an assignment that he's given you. You can have an anointing for um, to roll out something innovative that the world's never seen. You can have an anointing on your life for music. Um, you can have an anointing on your life for speaking. So that's more general and not so specific. And what it is, is a special grace from the Lord. In the Old Testament, the priests were anointed. And then the priests were first anointed, and then the priest got to anoint things. And whenever something was anointed with oil, that's where it came from, is that thing or person that was anointed would be set apart and it would be useful for the Lord. Lord, we're setting aside, we're anointing this uh, object or thing um, and it is now set aside for God's use for whatever he wants to do. So the anointing that we've received is now from the Holy Spirit. That's the cool thing about the New Testament uh, scriptures. Um, you need that. No man teach you. The anointing that you've received is from God, and it uh, teaches you uh, all things. And so what that does not mean is we don't need man, but what it does mean is we all have a specific anointing for something that's on our lives. So every person, if you have received the Holy Spirit, you have an anointing. The question is, for what? So, so I think that might be a shocker to some people. So what I heard you say is everyone has an anointing. They may not know what it is. Would you say that it's true that a lot of people never really, well, how would I say it? Take advantage of my anointing, step into my anointing, do like, is that safe to say? And, and how would you like, how would you talk about that? I mean, this is like not a statistic to brag about or anything for the church, 
But it has been said that 80% of the church does not step into the fullness of their anointing. Um, other statistics have said only 20% of the church actually finds convergence. What they were created or put on this planet to do, and they're walking in it to the fullness. Right. So that fits perfectly in alignment with um, just this feeling that I've had, kind of a different way to look at it, which is uh, what I've seen, witnessed, and what I've read about is that... Um, one of the enemy's greatest tools, well, like first we know his mission is to kill, steal, and destroy, right? So one, of, so he wants to he wants to do that. When he can't do it like that bluntly, then the second goal is to make sure you don't step into your anointing, you don't do your anointing, because yeah. if you were created on purpose by God to do something, then he doesn't want that to happen. Yeah. Well, and also, uh, when we talk about anointing, do we use other words for the same thing? Like some people Good might question. say gifting or assignment, or is that kind of the same uh, track? It is. It's empowerment. It's grace, blessing. Now, again, the caveat, though, is am I using this for the Lord? Because we could go a step further, because many of us are skilled, there's a difference between skill and anointing. And that anointing... So somebody could develop the skill to play the piano, and that would be different than someone that has the anointing to play the piano. Exactly. Yep. And that anointing is, okay, now I'm using this skill, and God has blessed my skill. He's kissed it, so to speak. He's blessed it. He's empowered it for the sake of the gospel. So now it's I've stepped from skill and all the work that I've done, even if I've been blessed in my creation to hear music or be amazing at music, I've given myself to it, I've applied it, but then I've decided I want to use this to glorify God. And the Lord has said, then I will anoint you. I will bless you if you give that thing back to me. And now you're empowered beyond just your natural skill in a supernatural way. So the anointing is for supernatural. Um, the question is, or it might be, um, so why? What does the anointing do? Well, the Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. And that's its goal, is to, like Jesus said, for this reason, the Son of Man was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the evil one. And so that's what the anointing does. It just looks for darkness. It looks for everything that's not kingdom and goes, how could I use who I am to bring light, to bring love, to bring health, to bring joy, happiness, righteousness, you know, all of those right. things. Right, right. Uh, so are we um, born with the anointing? Because you mentioned something about connecting with Holy Spirit on the anointing. So how does that work? Are we are we born with anointing and then it's like more empowered once we check in with Holy Spirit or maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yep. I believe that we are. I believe that we're born with the ability to do what God's called us to do. And here's what I mean by that. Some people think that um, nope, you don't have any ability when you are born from the womb. You have to have this specific work of grace. And that's when someone lays hands on you at, at, at church or God encounters you in your bedroom through some sort of fasting and prayer or whatever. And God fashioned us in our mother's womb. That's what Psalm 139 talks about. And when he fashioned us, he made us to have a God-size um, ability that's just sitting there waiting. It's probably like um, Tesla uh, and the cars that they're making. You can, these cars are probably equipped with whatever you determine the level that you want to purchase the car. So do you want it on autopilot? With a click of a button, you can just order that up. Or nowadays, for the Tesla cars, you can turn it off. So you can have autopilot for a weekend if you want to, or turn it off. So it's that same thing. I believe that we're made to just slip into the mantle and the anointing that God created us with. But 
what happens begin to converge. Your anointing begins to grow. You recognize you're on this planet for his glory. You, things sort of come together. Paul says that Jesus, even Jesus grew in favor with God and man and in the spirit and in power. So if Jesus can learn about his anointing and about why he was born, then so should we. Wow, it's super powerful. So so how is so so anointing and then now talk about mantle to find that for us and and how they're different and are they interchangeable and what's it, what is a mantle? Yeah, it's just not over our fireplace, right? No, it is over <laughs> your fireplace. But the mantle that you're referring to in the Bible is um, fathers wanted a way, and, and really God came up with this. Um, you see it in Joseph's life, for instance, in Genesis, where fathers wanted a way to pass down um, legacy. And they wanted a physical manifestation of a way that they could take their coke, uh, cloak um, or their coat off of their back and literally hand it down to their sons. And it was a mantle passing on. That was a physical, like Joseph's coat of many colors. Um, and then it became more spiritual as time went on. But you'll notice that, for instance, when this transference of um, mantles was happening in Elijah and Elisha in Second Kings, um, he wanted that cloak. And Elisha, Elijah said, if you see me when I go, you can have what I have. But this question came out of the son, uh, the spiritual son named Elisha. And in 2 Kings 2, he says, I'm a, Elijah said, I'm about to be taken from you. What, what do you want? What do you desire from me? And in 2 Kings 2, uh, verse 10, um, Elisha says this, I want the same spirit that is on you to be on me. That was his desire. That's what it is. Yes. He had seen enough of God's grace, anointing, you know, blessing on Elijah. And he goes, I want what's on you to be on me. Have you ever been inspired by someone else? And you're like, man, if I could have half of what you have, if I could just have a portion of what you have, I, I've done that. I've asked people over the years that I have been inspired by, can you pray for me? Mm -hmm. is, is, there, is, there a, is there a point of impartation? This is what we're asking for. That is there a way that something that God has blessed you with can be on me? And so here's how he responds. Elijah responds to Elijah Elisha, this way. He says, you have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. So when you... Kind of a you snooze, you lose kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> if you so see precious. me is more than just if you physically see me. Because you know the story. He, um, Elijah was taken up in a chariot in a whirlwind supernaturally God caught him up to heaven and Elisha's watching this you know down below him it's I just imagine the whirlwind just a wind he just you know Gilligan and Skipper and I just imagine oh, this man. day when you know Gilligan used to hang on to the trees and his feet were up in the air waving uh, that's how my mind works too much. You know what he's talking about there, Prudence? I know the name. Gilligan's but Island. I know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Too much TV she, in the 80s. She that was my... wasn't allowed to watch TV. Okay. So she... That was my babysitter in, in the 80s. Gilligan's Island is just, you know, definitely the devil for oh. sure. Yes. No. It was a three hour tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> by the way, the, the facts are that, uh, uh, you know, that boat could only go about 10 to 12 knots, so a three-hour tour means <laughs> it could only go about 42 miles away from wherever it started. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, fun fact. Oh, my goodness. So back to Elijah, Elisha. Um, so you've got this hunger and a desire from somebody younger to have what's on the older person. And the older person says, if you see me when I'm taken from you, you can have it. And that word for see is if you honor if you literally see the value of what I bring to you, mm -hmm. you can have it. If you see me 
And the reason why you're even hungry for what I have wow. is because you're called to take it to the next level. Right. And that became Elisha's prayer. Uh, and his, his desire was, I just want what's on you. But what he got, if you remember, was a double portion. Right. So it wasn't, so I think that see you thing is really important because I think it's super easy to go, oh, so he had to just be like really alert so he could spot this guy as he's leaving. That is not at all what it means. It's more like if you are, it's almost like, hey, if you, if you can really see what's happening and what the Lord is doing and that's what you want, then you'll be able to step into that. So, yeah. And do we have the ability to give somebody else what we carry? Yes. Paul said it in Romans, I long to come to you that I may impart some spiritual gift to you. And so that's where the, the ministry of the laying on of hands in Scripture comes from. Um, and so it's for an impartation. And so to the mantle side of things, um, it's first important to that we identify people that inspire us. Not just ethereal people in the Bible or people that we don't know, but people in this life that we know. And then to see them means to also serve them. Because part of seeing is, I see something in you. There's a reason why I'm attracted to it. And I want to go serve that thing that I'm seeing. That's the best way, by the way, to receive a mantle, is to serve what you see. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says, if you see me uh, and you behold me, then you can become who I am. And so that's the same thing. We become what we behold. If you're seeing all kinds of negative or if, you, if, if you're going sideways on people that are trying to speak into your life that God's ordained as leaders, but you don't see the value of who they are, you're not going to get an impartation from who they are. Hmm. Wow. So it's not just like winning the lottery, spiritual lottery. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pass this. Like they have, there has to be a, an acceptance of all that it entails. So, okay, here's a an, an example. And maybe you can say if this works or not. So, um, say somebody um, comes up to you and they have the same um, gifting as you do in, in a certain area and you don't know them and they say, can I pray for you to put a mantle of what I have on you, but you don't know them? What is that a bad idea? Are you what, asking if that's does, like a cautionary thing? Yeah, or? well, like, what, would you, what should someone do in that circumstance? Yeah, go back to the Bible. The Bible says, know those who minister among you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know them, don't do it. I don't care what mantle they may say that they're carrying, because there's all kinds of funky stuff when you get into impartations and anointings and mantles. Um, if that's not done in a super healthy, I've known you for a while, Elijah, Elisha, if that's not coming from your natural father or your spiritual father, mm -hmm. then don't do it. Do not receive it from Joe Schmo. And I'm super careful about those who lay hands. The Bible says, don't lay hands on anyone suddenly and therefore take part in their sin. Mm. So don't let it be right. done to you and don't do it yourself. Um, because so we shouldn't just be casual about any of this stuff is what you're saying. No, this is something that the Lord, it, it's, it's powerful. It's real. If it was just, a, oh yeah, que sera, sera, then we would just be cavalier about it. But the Lord's not cavalier about it. And he's very instructional in terms of scripture. Now let's talk about like the difference in regards to anointing and, and a mantle. Um, a mantle can be for a certain role. Or a position. Like, for instance, Barack Obama can step into the, man the mantle of president for the United States. But as soon as he gets out of that office, he leaves the mantle with the office. Does that make sense? Right, right. That's not an, a mantle that goes with. That's a mantle that goes with the office, not the person. And so, depending on where his life is in Christ, he'll step into a mantle that the Lord ordained for leadership for our country. But if, depending on his life in Jesus and his life with the Lord, he'll either step out of that mantle with an anointing or not. And he was just under the grace of the Lord 
while under that mantle. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So, so mantles wow. can be taken on and off? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Mantles can be taken on and off. Uh, you can be dismantled. Oh. Oh, that, I've heard of that, that word. That does yes. not sound good <laughs> That is at all. not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Um, but the gifts of God are without repentance. Again, that goes back. That's different. The gifts, the anointings, and mantles are different. Your gifts, God's given to you without repentance. That means um, he's not going to repent or even be sorry that he gave those to you. I, I mm -hmm. see it this way. God gives us gifts. Our worship back to him is how we use those gifts. How we um, choose to uh, align our hearts to him, come into healthy places where God can use you, and that much power is not going to blow you up. You know what I mean? You're not going to get prideful, arrogant, start um, bringing people in to worship you or different levels of worshiping you where it becomes all about you. These are my spiritual sons and daughters. You know, that just becomes weird. And you can see at different levels when people are working through what it's like to use their anointing and mantle in a healthy way. That takes a lot of years. Question. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so as, as you're looking at those questions, I feel like one of the things that you're stressing is it, the importance of understanding what you're really asking for, the importance of knowing who you're getting it from. So in the Elisha, Elijah scenario, there is this um, mutual understanding through a long relationship. Like this wasn't a man, this guy came to my service and spoke this weekend and it was amazing. Like it was a long relationship, like a dedication um, where he was serving under his teaching for a long time. So there was a total awareness of what, what the ministry was, what the mantle was. And he still said, if you see me, right? So like, I feel like that is really stressing the importance of knowing what you're really asking for or receiving or giving. Absolutely. Just like if you were a child um, and you were at school, you wouldn't um, l get in the car of some other father that wasn't your own to give you a ride home, right? right? Your right. parents tell you, do not take rides from strangers. And that's the same thing. Um, there's so much talk about spiritual fathers and mothers and you shouldn't have to wonder whether they're really your spiritual father or mother. You know what fathers do. Let's keep it simple. They have nurtured you. They have fed you. They have protected you. They have spoken right, into your right. life. They don't get to come into your life on a Sunday special service and all of a sudden become your father. That's not what happens. Look right. up what the Apostle Paul says. I became your father in the faith. And then he goes through this whole litmus test of how he became a father for them. It's super huge. And so in that 2 Kings 2 um, chapter, um, it goes on to say <clears throat> that in verse 11, And as they were walking along and talking, behold, a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire. And they separated the two of them. And then Elijah went up in a whirlwind to heaven. And Elisha was watching and he was crying out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. And he did not see Elijah again. And he took hold of his clothes and he tore them. He took hold of his own clothes and he tore them in two pieces. And he also took up the coat, there's the mantle, of Elijah that had fallen from him and he went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan and then he took the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him and he struck the waters and he said where is the Lord God of Elijah and when he had also struck the waters they were divided here and there and Elisha crossed over wow I mean that just it portrays such a more serious scenario than I think a lot of times we kind of look at this. Like, it was a very serious... And also, side note, in the Old Testament, they're always ripping their clothes off. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's constantly, like, things going good, things going bad, they're running around naked. Yeah. It's crazy. 
it's definitely an that state of their clothing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely an upgrade, right? I mm-hmm. mean, because what's happening is, Lord, um, I love what you've given me, and I love what you've put in me, but a son recognizes he has need of something that's bigger than him. A slave only knows right. the mantle that he has, the clothes that he's right. wearing. He doesn't recognize this form of legacy because a slave doesn't understand legacy. A slave grew up without a spiritual father. You know what I mean? So he only understands what, how he looks to other people. He doesn't understand carrying on something that's bigger than him. A slave mentality, um, he doesn't know legacy, so he's running a company on his own strength. He hasn't had a father pour into him or a mother pour into him. A slave is running their own ministry, their own lifestyle, and they don't know legacy. And chances are, because of that, there's not a lot of understanding regarding how to pass along who they are to their children, both natural and spiritual. But in this case, Elisha had to take off his own clothes and just go, okay, I'm about to receive something that's bigger than me, and it has a bigger spread, if you will, than just my personal DNA. I've got to be willing to step into something that is larger than me. It's like when Abraham took his son Isaac and said, Isaac, I want you to carry the wood for a vision that you did not receive. I had an encounter with God. He actually told me to take you up and sacrifice you, but without me telling you all of those details, I'm going to ask you to carry wood or your cross for an encounter or a vision that you didn't have. Are you willing? And that's spiritual sons and daughters. Often they have to carry and be willing to give their lives for something they haven't fully seen. And that's how you know whether they're true sons. A slave wow. will not give his life for something he's not fully convinced of. Right. Because it's, it's not by choice, right? It's, it's a forced scenario. Hmm. Uh, so um, how do you increase or do you? Like with anointings, can you, can you, is it like a muscle that you grow? Um, and is it the same thing for a mantle? Like, how do you make it go up and can down? Can you go can to you, the anointing gym? Yeah. Can work you out? Work? Yes. Pump anointing iron? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And that is such a good question, by the way, because people think, well, if I got it, I got it. And so why would I need to exercise it or use it or grow in faith? Well, again, I go back to, and Jesus grew in the spirit and in power and in favor with God and man. And that was Jesus. That was Jesus. Just to clarify. Yes. And so... If that's true for him as the son of God, then yes, hopefully we are growing in our anointing and mantle and in power and in favor with God and man, God and man. So if you had everything you needed when you were born, um, then you wouldn't need to grow. Um, So how do you learn to walk it out? And this is the secret, and it's so simple, most people overlook it. And the way to grow in your mantle and anointing is to serve someone who has a similar mantle and anointing as you. Without agenda. Yep. Just serve. You find that person and you're attracted to that person. What I mean by attracted is you love what you see in them and you're attracted to them for a reason. And you go find that person if you can and serve them. Um, Find a way to serve them. Sometimes it's somebody that's in another country and maybe you saw them on YouTube or whatever, serve them in prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, I bless so and so and God, I just, with no agenda, sometimes you can serve them financially, sometimes you're in proximity and you can serve them um, like in our environment. Um, Those are the ones that I'm going to spend the most of my time as a spiritual father with are the ones who get it and they're serving. The ones who see something in one of our leaders, and I just say, if you want that anointing, if you want that mantle, go serve that person and serve them with no agenda, awesome. even if it takes years. Mm. Are there any other ways that you can, like, some people may not be around anyone that has that sub- substance, but is there any other ways that, um, you can help build that 
if you don't have that, or at least in that season of life, you're not finding it. Yep. Every mantle, you know, there are some people that say, oh, I went to a, you know, I'm, I'm just going to get super weird for a second. I was going to go there. I know where you're going. I've heard so many weird things. Yeah. I went to the gravesite of Smith Wigglesworth, and I laid hands on the tomb, and, or the, the uh, what do you call it? I call it a stone. There you go. The, 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 the stone. Gravestone. The, the, the monument. Gravestone. Yeah. <laughs> Headstone. Uh, yeah. Tombstone. Tombstone. There, there you go. we go. Finally. I laid hands on it, and now I've got the mantle. It was weird because this, like, bird flew over me as I was uh, laying my hands on it. And sometimes, guys, that can happen, so don't let me talk that down. But um, as though that was the way... Right. To get a to get a mantle, and supernaturally, sovereignly, you can get mantles that way. Um, not all of these guys who had mantles in Scripture got them from their fathers. So the best thing to do, Jesus summed it all up, and he said, "Put on." Or uh, Paul said this, "Put on Christ." So that's the best mantle, by the way, is to put on Christ. And if you grow in Christ, here's how it works. You have to have the character to be able to sustain your anointing. If your character is here and your anointing is here, then you're doing great. But if your character is here and your anointing is here, you're not doing great. Something's right. going to happen. and you're so, so you're saying that your character is always going to be the ceiling to your anointing. I believe, I believe that's the Lord's will for you. I believe there are moments where people get super excited about your anointing and they start putting you on the platform or handing you the mic and they forget to grow your character. And all of a sudden... They ignore it. Yeah. Recipe, recipe for disaster. And, you're a, and, and in my opinion, that's laying hands on someone too suddenly and they actually take part in your sin. Because at some point, you're going to blow yourself up or blow your family up or you're going to cheat on your wife or you know something like that if you don't have the character to sustain your anointing. Wow. Wow, that's, um, that's heavy duty. That's so heavy duty. the encouragement is stay in the word. Um, stay accountable. Stay um, vulnerable about your weaknesses. If you're having trouble with guys or girls, you know, it's like the four G's that Bob Jones used to tell us to watch out for. Gold. That means... Money. Money. Cash. Yes. Cold hard. Gold. Gold bricks. Gold uh, bricks. Glory. Mm -hmm. Still in the glory and needing the identity of, wow, I guess I did rock it. Uh, <laughs> girls... <laughs> <laughs> or guys. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to watch out for those things and allow yourself to be chiseled. If you notice, and the first thing to do is identify your anointing. Identify mm -hmm. um, you, the mantles that you're stepping into. I, I, in my opinion, it usually starts with an anointing and then an, an anointing can become a mantle or you step into a mantle for a specific um, assignment God's given you. And once you step into that mantle, you need to ask yourself at different intervals, because there's all kinds of mantles to have. Um, you need to ask yourself, do I have the character to sustain this mantle? And if you don't, then just be honest about that. The reason why that mantle is available to you is because God wants you to walk in it. But if you don't have the character, then that's what this season's about. This season's about growing the character. I wouldn't necessarily lay down the mantle. I'd just get busy with mm -hmm. your character. Wow. Can you give a couple slight examples of what like a mantle is? Um... Do they have to be slight examples? Yeah, just slight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so these are um, mantles where, um, like for instance, the Bible talks about 1 Corinthians that there is a gift of prophecy that we can all have. And then there is the office of a prophet that only some were given. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 as well that he gave some to be apostles, some prophets. So not everybody's a prophet, right? Not everybody's an apostle or an evangelist or pastor or teacher. Um, that's more of a mantle which goes for an office. But don't just limit mantles to the 
um, Ephesians 4 fivefold ministry. As I mentioned earlier, you can have a mantle to be the CEO of a company. You can have a mantle to be the president of the United States. It's a, a calling that is used to glorify the Lord in that position. And um, so a mantle is something that I believe God does not hand out very easily. Um, but giftings and anointings, um, everyone's got those. Everyone. You may all prophesy, 1 Corinthians 14, but not everyone's a prophet. Hmm. And we got to get up with that. That's hard to go, no, I want the office too. I want the platform. I want the title. I want, just go ahead and call me Prophet Bobby. I run from that mm -hmm. because it's not necessarily, usually that sort of need for title means brokenness somewhere inside. So, so let's say you identify that you have a particular anointing, calling kind of thing. Should you, would it then be a good steward of that anointing to seek out the mantle? Absolutely. I begin to, number one, I look, as I mentioned, I look for ways to serve. And then just like anything else, if you recognize, I feel like I'm called to be a doctor. And I feel like God's put the mantle on me of a doctor. Now, some of you might be going, you can only have a mantle for spiritual, biblical things. I disagree. I disagree. Um, because there are mantles for kings. There were kings in the Old Testament. Um, and not all of them were righteous kings. And still they had a mantle. And God would visit them. God would speak to them. He spoke to Abimelech, who was a non-righteous king, and said to Abimelech in a dream, if you don't give Sarah back, you're a dead man. Remember that? Yeah. And there were m moments where um, Saul, who was chasing David to kill uh, David, and Saul was a wicked king. David said, I will not touch the anointing that's on his life. Right? right? Do not touch his anointing. And so that kind of thing, there are still mantles of position that the Lord honors. And that's why the Lord tells us to honor those in authority over us. Whether they're uh, righteous or not righteous, still you can honor the mantle without having to um, agree with the man. Does that make sense? Wow, mm -hmm. that is super okay. powerful. All right, that's super so, powerful. So as we're wrapping this up, you got another question, Alice. So we we got about yeah. eight minutes yeah. for this next question. Um, why should a Christian care about this stuff? Like, if you're just talking to the basic church, nobody really knows what this stuff is, and we're learning some about that today. But what is the motivation for me to care? Yeah, why does it matter? Why does this matter? Oh my goodness, that is such or a is good it, question. Is it only for like, you know, superheroes that have like a suit on underneath their right. shirt? Is yeah. it only for those guys? Oh man, that's why I love to demystify mantles. Um, because again, the religious mindset is it's only for the most amazing people in scripture. No one else is qualified. You know, that's what the religious spirit will lie to you and tell you. Um, so... I guess my question to that question is, how much do you want to walk in what God has called you to walk in? How much are you right. excited about living in the fullness um, of Christ and what he's put on your life? And a lot of that begins with a question. It begins with, out of this, uh, this show, just going, Lord, I heard something on that program that made me want to be bold enough to ask the question, what calling, mantle, anointing is on my life? Right. And yeah. what do I need to do to step into it to become the best version of myself that you've created me to be? Because that's really what it's all about. Um, why would you want to do that? Because you won't live life to the fullest unless you find out why God made you. Man, that's good. That's so good. And even if you're not there yet, even if, and there's a vacuum or, or a space between where we are and where we feel God's called us to be, there should be. That space should not be depression, by the way. That space should be hunger. Mm. Right? Yeah. Right. I want to make sure that, that we hear that. So you're, you're saying, hey, there should be a gap. 
you never arrive. Yep. Jesus' example was he grew in favor with God and man. So there's never a point where you've achieved f- fullness mm-hmm. in this area. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, when you identify your gap, that should create hunger not negativity on yourself for there being a gap. Correct. And that's what makes you, ex- the way you need to interpret that. And if you're interpreting it as a slave, you're going to get depressed at the difference between where you are and where you want to be. That's going to equal de- depression. And that's how you know you're looking at it through a slave mentality. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at it through a son or daughter mentality, you're going to notice the difference between where you are and where you want to be. And it's going to create this excitement, wow. adventure, and joy to grow in God. You're going to pick up all the books that you can on such and such a topic, and you're going to start going after it. That's what a disciple is. It's becoming a student of the thing that you're going after. So don't just be an accidental tourist, as some people say. Mm -hmm. Receive that mantle intentionally. Go after it. It's worth it. And if you value it, you'll go after it. If you don't value it, you'll just wait for it to come on you, and you'll be part of the 80% that really never comes into conversion. Yeah, and as this happens, right, the enemy's going to try to whisper in your ear how really you, you suck, right? And that's what you're talking about. Instead of buying into that, instead of taking that on, that's where you need to have the hunger to go after it. So, um, you know, as we wrap this up, I feel like there's some people that are hearing this and they're hearing some of this stuff for the first time and they're like, well, I don't know about that. So uh, if you're if you're feeling like, I don't know, this stuff seems a little odd, it, it is all throughout scripture. So go crack the Bible open and do a word search for mantle and anointing, and you're going to find a lot of examples of it. And as that happens, I my prayer would be that you would begin to hear from the Holy Spirit, and you would begin to start to have that hunger that you're talking about, Bobby. So can you take a minute and just take like two minutes and pray for people that are that this is resonating with, that they're like, gosh, I never really thought of that. Um, and, and also for the person that is maybe lived most of their life, and they're like, oh man, I wish I would have known this. It's too late for me. Hopefully a young person hears that. Like, what would you say to them and pray for them? And, and let's just take two minutes and, and pray for these guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the quick, um, what I would say to them first is you're never too old to be awakened to the gifts and the callings that are on your life. And that's really what the Spirit of God is doing right now. He's awakening us all Mm -hmm. to that. And hopefully that awakening is creating and cultivating a spiritual hunger inside of you, a relentless hunger um, that enables you to stop at nothing to go after that. Elisha had had to do something. If you see me when I go, In other words, you better be in close proximity to me. And if you see me when I go, you can have what I have. And so let's do that. The biggest thing is to put on Christ and see him for all of his glory and amazingness. And then be bold enough to ask the right question. And the right question is, Lord, who have you made me to be? Who have you created me to be? And Lord, if I'm not that, no shame. Just empower me to be that. And then you just literally, to the third person of the Trinity, you say, Holy Spirit, empower me to be who you've created me to be. Because I recognize I was not made to do this under my own strength. I have a supernatural calling that has to be bigger than my abilities to get it done. And then what that does is that creates enough hunger for you to get on your face and begin to pray for the greatest adventure ever known. And that's your life in Christ. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the hunger. We thank you, Lord, first of all, for... Um, this show, this program that's bold enough to go out and talk about these kinds of things and all of the people watching who are hungry enough to say, that's me. I'm standing in the need of prayer and I want to live my life to the fullest. I don't want any regrets. I don't want to turn back. I don't want to be um, confused about my um, purpose on this planet. Holy Spirit, would you highlight the um, mantles, the anointings that I am called to 
to give my life to for the name and the sake of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I commit myself to honor Jesus with my anointing, not just to get me more money, more fame, more glory. I want to glorify Jesus with who I am. So Lord, here's my life. Whether I've got five days left, 500 days left, 50 years left, God, I give my life 100% to you. Here I am. And that vessel the Lord will fill. And so I'm just praying for you right now. God, fill the vessels. Some great, some small, some big, some uh, ornate. Lord, fill their hearts right now with your grace and give them the spiritual hunger to study about it, to pray about it, to honor someone else who's already got it, and to look for ways to serve. Your mantle will cause you to serve the Most High God. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. So, mm. Bobby, would would Second Kings be a good place to start if someone wants to dig into this more? Is that like a good place to start, or do Absolutely. you recommend somewhere else? No, Second Kings is a great place. Study Elijah, Elijah, Elisha, and that whole uh, mantle transfer, and how he first found him in a field, and he was working, and all of that, and he just didn't want to leave his side. Go through the whole story about the, how they had to go through regions, and you'll see how much Elisha wanted to be next to him and serve his anointing in order to get a double portion. Man, that is that yeah. is fantastic. Thank you so much yes, for spending time you. with us today. <laughs> we really appreciate it. I know that some of this stuff, for some people, might just be basic um, information, but I guarantee you that you learn something. Um, and for a lot of people, this is really new stuff. It, it shouldn't be. It really it shouldn't is. be, but it's yep. new stuff. So thank you for pouring mm -hmm. in to everyone that, one that's watching. Also, remember, Bobby has a show called A New Era on Eagle Mountain TV as well. So go to eaglemountain.tv. You can follow this show. You can see past episodes of this show. If you're watching this one live and you want to go see other uh, amazing topics, go find that at Eagle Mountain TV. You can also find Bobby's show at Eagle Mountain TV. There's a ton of amazing content. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or Rumble, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the stuff. You don't want to miss a single thing that comes out of the Eagle Mountain TV network. So that was amazing. Yep. So we'll be I having guess you we'll back see you for guys. some more we'll questions. See you guys on the next one, and I'll Thanks have to come up with more challenging trivia. <laughs> that was All right. All right. We'll see you guys around. Thanks.